a wonderfully reflective time. You know, it's a time to retreat into the self. And in the long nights of winter, what happens is sleep can break into different components. And in the middle between those two components is a time of natural transcendence. But the other thing that's worth thinking about is that we often are very creative when we undergo shifts in states of consciousness. When you are in your waking state, that's one state of consciousness. When you meditate with TM and go into a transcendent state, it's a different state of consciousness and other ideas will kind of come to mind. And people who go from the uh, rapid thoughts racing, active, energized state of summer and move into a reflective state of winter can find that each of these different states of being and states of awareness bring their own gifts. And when you combine these gifts together, sometimes you get the most creative effects. You go into your transcendent state, ideas bubble up, you finish your meditation, you go run and write them down, and they become the basis for a poem or a book or a novel or whatever. And likewise, in the summer you might get many, many ideas, and then in the winter, in a more reflective mode, you might kind of put them together and begin to shape them and fashion them into a completed creative work. So shifts in states of consciousness are very valuable for the creative process because we see things. Creativity involves seeing things in different ways. And um, it's a very funny piece that uh, Woody Allen writes about how the Earl of Sandwich invented the sandwich. And the Earl of yeah. Sandwich the symptoms. But if you're on an island where there's a lot of cloud and not a lot of snow, that is a harder environment for somebody who is so sensitive to the lack of light. Prevalence, of course, depends on how you define your cases. When you've got a bacterium, like diphtheria, it's very easy to diagnose prevalence. When you've got something where you have to have some measurement, then it's harder. But I would rate the prevalence where I am in the mid-Atlantic area of the United States, around Washington, D.C., at about 5% of people with severe symptoms. Bad enough to warrant going to the doctor and another, say, 15% with mild symptoms, where it's not like it lays you low that you can't get out of bed, but you're not as creative, you're not as productive, life just isn't as much fun. And, you know, in America, we have in our Constitution that we have the right to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. The pursuit of happiness is actually enshrined and and I like that I think we shouldn't just be well we should be happy we should be the best we can be so I think it's very important to recognize that you don't have to be one of those hardcore SAD people to benefit from some of the things which is why I've called it winter blues because even those that are blue can benefit from some of these things well you know I actually am not really an aficionado in the Ayurvedic tradition. I know a little bit about it, but uh, there are, of course, um, ancient ways of dealing with the seasons. There's the Chinese Book of Changes, the Ni Ching, that says that in the winter you should go to sleep early and you should wake late. There are traditions that suggest that you shouldn't oppose the seasons, you should kind of go with the seasons. Um, maybe in a more Western tradition, you know, somebody said, everybody complains about the weather, but nobody does anything about it. Well, in the Western tradition, often we try to do something about it. And what we do is we bring light into our rooms so that we try and replace what is missing. And um, so, but, but some of it is going with it, because I can tell you that even with all the things that one might do, winter never feels like summer. It's always different. You know, to move from one space to another and see light and 
colors and the colors of flowers and the aromas of the flowers and the buzzing of the bees. And who can duplicate that? Certainly not a light box. So it never feels the same and spring always feels like an awakening. And it should. But at least the worst of that down feeling can be um, ameliorated to a huge degree. And that's a relief for all of us who experience it. Not everybody does. Whenever I've been on the radio about winter depression, people will always call in and say, you know, I love the winter. I hate the summer. And that's what's wonderful about human beings. We're all wired so differently. We love and hate different things, and that's what makes us all so interesting, because we're all so different.